name is Antje. I'm a principal developer advocate at AWS. I get to work with Nick and our product team really closely in developing MCP. And Nick already talked about how we see MCP evolving, all the great potential, how we at AWS are also involved as part of the community in contributing, very exciting. In my talk, I wanna focus a little bit on more the practical parts, how you can scale MCP from moving from your local environments, which are great for prototyping and getting things set up, to really kind of a cloud scale deployment of MCP, specifically MCP servers. So we all pretty much started when MCP came out in building a lot of MCP servers, getting excited. And of course, we did the same. So if you're looking specifically for the MCP servers that are available, here's the GitHub link, GitHub AWS lab slash MCP. This list keeps growing, I would say hourly. <laughs> so if you have checked that out maybe a few weeks ago, definitely come back, there's a huge list. If you're building on AWS, check this out. A lot of great resources in here. One thing though, a lot of those MCP servers started out with standard IO, as probably the majority of us started building. I wanna just show one example here, which is our AWS documentation MCP server. This one shows how you can easily get started for those of you who are just early on in the journey to simply take existing public APIs that you might already have and just wrap them as an MCP server to get started. And this is actually internally at Amazon, our documentation team did. And here's just a quick architecture diagram. I won't go into too much detail. They basically used our public available APIs, so documentation search, pages, the recommendations, and also helping to navigate the site. So you can search, read, navigate, and kind of wrap that as tools and expose it as this MCP server. I'm running a quick video here. This just shows how you can use that. So on the client side, we're using here, just as an example, our Amazon Q Dev CLI tool. And in here, you can see you can define MCP servers. We added the AWS Docs one. And then you can basically just put in as you work with today, a natural language request. Hey, I wanna have some information about to set something up specifically, show me how to do that and show me what the dogs tell about it. And then the client thinks about it, calls the server and then gets the results back. You see here's a search documentation specifically tool use and then basically reads the documentation and also brings back together here in a second the response you wanna see. Here we go. So this is really kind of a very easy example of wrapping existing APIs into this. Now, big question is, why does this have to run on my local machine, right? And it's a great start because we can experiment quickly, we can prototype quickly, but to take MCP and to take agents to the next level, we need to figure out a way to decouple and also be able to call servers that might not be running locally on my machine. And hey, this is a paradigm we've seen in tech industry before, right? So again, I'll keep this short. I think everyone in the room has seen this plenty of times today. We started out with standard IDO, SSE, limited off support, and the latest spec here added a great thing, HTTP. Who would have thought? <laughs> so we do have streamable HTTP um, where we can now build those patterns, right? And one of the challenges really we see here right now is we're still early in this and there are some dependencies, right? First of all, we evolve the spec together. Once the spec is evolved to support it, there is some time needed for the SDKs to catch up, right? And I think maybe there's a new one added. I think when I put together the slides, it was the Python and TypeScript only SDK supporting it, streamable HTTP. So this is kind of really kind of where we're right now a little bit just on the way to building this out. And then the other important thing, when you have the SDK support, you need the client app support as well, right? So this one also follows behind. And we do have now some 
that support or many that support SSE. And I had a discussion before, like everyone started building that out. And now suddenly we have streamable HTTP, but how many clients already support that? Right, and I think there's a lot of opportunity for us like developers to start building those out. And I don't want to go too much in the slide. I, I know you've seen similar pictures before, but SSE, again, you do a request, HTTP GET request, you're setting up this persistent SSE connection, and then you have your HTTP post with a specific request that is accepted, and then the data is sent through the SSE connection. For streamable HTTP, there is no persistent connection. You have this request response pattern. So you send an HTTP post, you get a response back, and then you send requests or batched requests over, and similarly, you get responses back. All right, let's go to the more interesting part. How can you build this today on AWS? And there's plenty of ways for those of you working with AWS to achieve things. So you can obviously build service using a lot of the infrastructure components. I want to touch on two for serverless deployments. Now, if you want to have SSE support and you have a need for those persistent connections for your use case, you can choose AWS Fargate for Amazon ECS. So what this does is you can package your MCP servers and then deploy them as container images and run it with the help of Fargate and ECS in a serverless way. It takes a time to scale up and scale down automatically, but it can take a couple of minutes to scale. On the contrast, if you are not required to use those persistent connections, you can go with AWS Lambda. And maybe it's just a quick show of hands who are familiar with AWS and Lambda? Vast majority, almost everyone in the room, perfect. So this is what I'm gonna show you in a bit as well in a quick demo. So what I'm gonna show you is how you can pretty easy deploy your MCP service as a Lambda function, which means it's a managed serverless compute and it scales up and down automatically and also um, pretty, pretty flexible here, what you can build. If you want to tap into more services, if you're already building on AWS, everything you can build in Lambda, you can then also use to extend and tap into the broader ecosystem of AWS services. Now, let's look into how this will be built. And for those of you already working with Lambda, which I saw by the show of hands, are a majority of you, it's the same principles you've applied before, right? So if your MCP server is in Lambda, best practice as always is gonna have an API gateway before in which you're calling in from your agent. And we've discussed it today a bunch too, security is really important, right? So in this quick demo, what we did is adding a Lambda authorizer function, which will make sure you're really authorized to make those requests. Now, before I show the demo, I want to just quickly hint this out, and I don't know if Mike is in the room. Mike is in the room, okay, perfect. Mike built this demo, so credit to him. And I know Nick showed the use case of an agent booking a flight. And I'm not sure about you, but I, I know there's a lot of controversial opinions whether we want agents booking our flights, right? I think when we're on a quick need, yes, but I usually, I think, many different opinions. Anyway. Somebody will work on that business problem. Mike actually thought, let's do something fun. And I'm not sure how many of you are D&D fans. Yeah. All right, you can gather, join Mike, ask him all the tricks, tips and tricks. I have to admit, I'm not a D&D person. So I just learned there are dices that have more than six sides which was a really like, confusing concept to me when we talked about it yesterday. <laughs> so questions around that, please find Mike. But this is gonna be the demo, so there will be our tool, our MCP tool, that's rolling a dice. All right, now that we've set that up, here is a code example. And what we've built is a Lambda handler, which you can import into your Lambda function 
you set up an MCP server by calling it, you have a decorator to then turn those code snippets into your tool. So here's a hello MCP, whatever logic you wanna build in. We also capturing the session state in a DynamoDB table, pretty cool. You pass that in and then you can basically see here is the uh, function for rolling a dice, which is specifically for this purpose. You can see the doc string that gives the context that MCP can use. And at the very end here, you can see the Lambda handler, which then basically calls the MCP server and handle request. You can deploy all of this, and I have a link to the GitHub repo, the code is available for you, to just deploy via SAM which makes it really easy to just roll out this demo and deploy it in your accounts. We are also from the client side, and I'm gonna to touch on it a little bit after this as well, is a new SDK that we released just a few days ago, an open source SDK called Strands, to build this agent. And you can see here we're using it, MCP client, we're setting this one up, and then we're using the MCP call to the server to list the tools. We're passing the tools here into our agent. And then you can see if we're running this. Welcome to the Straits Agents, which I'll touch on in a bit. And we're asking it to roll a dice, which is a tool that we exposed. And here comes the crazy thing. It has like 20 sides. And we rolled a seven. So all the D&D &D fans, is that a good one? It's okay. I tried it before on my laptop, I got a one. I was told that's not a good one. <laughs> so you can keep using this, you can say, hey, you can also ask it, what are my previous dice rolls? So we, as again, we keep the session state, and then here you can see what have we rolled before, and then it brings back the list of that. So this is really kind of a, a very quick demo of what's possible, again, we put the MCP server in a Lambda function, very easy with decorators. This specific MCP Lambda handler, it's a concept prototype, so don't expect this to be the last one we can do this with Lambda. Um, Mike put some time into this just to put together kind of a concept prototype implementation. Again, authorization here is done with an authorizer function using a mirror token. Probably for production use, you want to change that into using maybe a Cognito-based identity management, et cetera, to really make it a production-ready one. But this is a great example how you get started in scaling MCP. And let me just quickly go back here to the slides. The big benefit is here, once you're in that world, everything you can do with Lambda, you can then build out as well and tap into all the goodness and the services that you might be already leveraging for building your applications. Now, Nick earlier talked about this whole concept of whether we can use MCP to build inter-agent communication. And Nick referenced the blog post that he, Mark Brooker, and Swami put out there. Here's the quick um, picture of it. Like, Nick talked about this diagram. Here's the QR code if you want to read that blog post that goes into a lot of more detail about this concept as well. Just giving you a sec for taking the picture here. And then this is the end of the presentation. If you want to play around, if you're a D&D &D fan, want to set this up as well, here's the link to Mike's code repo. I also have a link here that talks about the strand agents. Again, strand agents is a model-driven SDK to build agents that is not specifically to AWS. It integrates with our Amazon Bedrock service, but it also integrates with Meta's Llama models. It also integrates with Anthropic. It also integrates with Light LLM, so you can use it in combination with OpenAI models. So it's really kind of an open, flexible SDK, open source. And we see already a, a lot of excitement in the community. So if you wanna check that out as well. And then the code for the Lambda handler, is part of this AWS Labs MCP repo. So also feel free to check that out. And one last goodie before I wrap up here is you can get $25 credit to build on AWS. 
it's a very quick survey, just what is your experience with MCP? Are there any specific integrations you would like to see from AWS as well in this space? If you want to fill that out and then get your $25. And let's keep the conversation going at our table out there. Happy to discuss all of those topics further. Thanks so much.